I am a dead a catch. Ready? Okay, let's start. Hey guys, I'm a dead a catch viewer. I'm 18 years old and I'm from Australia. Originally born in South Sudan, raised in Kenya for six years, and then moved to Australia with my mum. My very first experience with like runway modeling I was doing a mini runway show for my auntie who was doing some designing some african clothes at the time after that there were some agencies that wanted to sign me but i was like 13 and i had to wait during that time in the period of 13 to almost 16 i was just doing test shoots and traveling interstate and just doing a few things here and there some little shows but didn't really get signed until i was 15 turning 16. Growing up, the thing I really did want to become was a journalist. I just liked the way the news reporters dressed and the way they talked and everything, and I wanted to become one of them. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. My career as a model makes me a no man by default. My home is in multiple places around the world. In this day and age, family has become such a beautiful and versatile word. As the world becomes more connected and many of us move constantly, often far away from our place of birth, we begin to create the same kind of bonds wherever we land. I don't remember much about my earliest years at Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya, but there would be those days where you would hear that someone has been killed by the bad people and you know everybody would get scared and would start packing our things about almost a year ago i started working with the un and i started working with unhcr which is the team that helps and supports refugees all around the world um when they had asked me if this is something i wanted to do i was more than thrilled um and the reason why i chose this team in particular it's because this is something personal to me. As some of you guys may or may not know my story, I myself am a refugee, so I can relate to these people. I know what it feels like to be forced out of your own home, forced out of your own country. I know what it feels like to have nothing. I know what it feels like to be living in fear every single day. I can go on all day about this topic, but, you know, so that was something very close to my heart. And ever since I was young, I always said when I get older I want to be a part of some sort of organization or foundation or something that helps people in need and the UN made that dream of mine come true. Um, like I mentioned when they had asked me if this is something I was interested in doing I was so thrilled and humbled and it's been an amazing journey so far you know and shout out to you the UN, you guys are doing an amazing job, you know, you're not only, you know, saving lives, but you're changing lives too. The purpose behind that was to channel the idea of childhood dreams when we were younger, what we wanted to become when we grow up. Um, so in this video, I'm going to tell you guys what I wanted to become when I was younger and what I have become today, as some of you guys <laughs> may not know. Um, and then I want you guys to comment below, every single one of you guys that's watched this video, please comment below what you wanted to become when you were younger. I would love to hear it. Um, so, let's get into it. Um, I'm a little nervous, I don't understand why, but anyways. Um, so growing up, when I was younger, I wanted to be a teacher when I got older. And the reason why I wanted to be a teacher was because my father was a teacher and I would hear these incredible stories about what an amazing teacher he was and I just wanted to be exactly like my father. Um, and then when I moved to Australia and I got a little bit older, I watched the news so much and I just fell in love with the whole idea of news reporting. Um, and I wanted to be a news reporter. I wanted to be a news lady when I got older. Um, like I loved writing, I enjoyed writing in school, so um, definitely journalism was something that I wanted and still want to do actually. And then um, as I got a little bit older, I found my passion and I wanted to become a model and now I'm a full-time model, you know, 
living my dreams um, and I'm so grateful for everything that's happening for me and my career um, I still love writing um, even if I don't become a news reporter I will definitely continue or will do something in journalism and just a little side note you know refugees like myself um, we all have big dreams just like everybody else and it would be incredible if the rest of the world could help make their dreams become a reality too. The refugee agency that I've been working with for some time now, they've just launched a new challenge called Hashtag Step for Refugees in the lead up to World Refugee Day on the 20th of this month, so note that down. This is a global challenge asking people to commit covering up to one mile or 2,000 steps a day. Not even a day, just covering up to 2,000 steps, um, which is something that we all can do very easily. And I believe that this is something we all do in our daily lives anyway, simply by walking to the train station or walking wherever, running, bike riding, very simple. Um, the only difference is this time we're asking you to record yourself and share this with your friends and family. Um, and nominate anybody that you would like to participate in this challenge. Um, a new discovery I just found out. Every year, refugees cover up to one billion miles just to reach safety. Um, so if you think about it, 2,000 steps is absolutely nothing. Um, so if you can be a part of this um, in helping us raise awareness, then please do so. Um, it's very simple. I'm going to show you guys me participating in this amazing cause um, and then I'm going to share with you guys and I nominate every single one of you guys watching this video to take part in this challenge and help us all raise awareness for refugees. If I could make one change in the world, I just want peace. I just want the world to be peaceful. I want everyone to just start getting along, loving each other, no more war, no more political BS. If I had that power to do that, that's what I would do. You remember the first time we met? Yes, I do. First time we met about three years ago. And I met you in the same building in the front. You were having your cigarette having your little chill moment. And then I walk in and I was like, hi, I'm looking for Valentino. And I remember us just chatting for maybe like 15, 20 minutes. And it was just like, I thought I was just talking to just, you know, just a normal person. I was like, ooh, I found someone who's really nice to talk to. And I came up here to do my fitting. And then you're sitting in the chair and I had to walk in front of you. And then I come to find you out said, later, you were, like, you were, you were, you the, were. the designer and I'm like, what? I was crazy, but since that day, you've just always been the same cool person I met from downstairs, and that's Thank all you. I ever look at you as. I am pleased to announce the model of the year 2019 is Adult Akert. This award is bigger than me, it's bigger than just a title in this industry. It is for the little girls and boys who are not heard and seen. It is for refugees all around the world who are in a tough position in their life right now and feel like there's no way out. To them I say this. Whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's modeling or acting or medicine, you should never doubt yourself or let the world convince you that it is not possible. Because if a little dark-skinned South Sudanese refugee who comes from absolutely nothing can do it, so can you. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Thank you so much. I am a dirt a catch. I am Sudanese Australian living in Brooklyn. I am a citizen of the world. I am a model, a learner, and a leader. Curious, grateful, a lover of life. I am adventurous. I am taking it one step at a time. I am who I am. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to comment below.